years. I've seen them people over there. I've been up on them boards, and they got them so drugged up on Thorazine and everything else. It's a crazy thing to be like that. What happens to all them demons once that person dies? Well, better look out. We know they went in uh, the swine when Jesus cast them out. Where are they going when somebody dies? All them demons. You think they just disappear? No, they're ready to attack somebody else and destroy their life. Anyway, I was telling you, and I went home uh, that uh, week. I was I was telling everybody about how God healed my heart and everything. Debbie didn't believe. She was afraid I wasn't going to do my echo test and my stress test. I wasn't going to go to the doctor or anything. I told her, she said, no. No, no, he didn't. No, no. I said, okay, I'm going to prove it to you. God did a miracle for me. I'm going to prove it to you. And I did my stress test and my echo. What did that doctor say, that heart doctor? What do you think he said? It's miraculous. That's what he said. I went clear up to a six on the treadmill. Olympics 10. Six is very good. Clear up to a six, and he said, it's miraculous. Uh, the apple show you're growing new veins in your heart. Your heart's not mushy anymore. You go out there and do whatever you want. you got a young man's heart. Just like many times that uh, Brother Bob was told about his cancer and things like that. By his stripes you are healed. I don't care what you say. Uh, they had me, when Debbie died on that, five kinds of medicines and all that. What do you think I did? Well, you think I want to be on medicine after what happened to Debbie? Are you kidding me? Do you think I want to, they put me in a hospital because I wasn't sleeping, I was having hallucinations? Are you kidding, you think I want, and they come in the cops all over my place trying to put me in an ambulance? Are you kidding, kidding me? I knew they wouldn't touch me or kill me because you think they're gonna kill daddy now? After they just lost their mother, three girls? No way they're gonna shoot me or anything. Anyway, I didn't want to go after 15 hours. I finally gave myself up and went. It's the only reason I went. Anyway, it was mir miraculous when, him, when I told Debbie <laughs> and she seen all the grass and the echoes and tell me God's not real today for each and every one of us today in his stripes. That's just, that's just a little part of what God's got to offer you today, his stripes. <clears throat> We're all like sheep have gone astray. We had turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquities of all. Each and every one of us, no exception. Uh, it don't matter who you are. Uh, one drop of that precious blood of Jesus Christ was shed for you. I don't care if you're a murderer, a serial killer, whoever you were, God shed that blood for you. He was oppressed and we were, he was afflicted. Yeah, he opened not his mouth. You know, wouldn't it be hard to suffer and die like that with not even a word for something, a, a crime that you hadn't even committed, falsely accused? And he didn't open up his mouth when they were spitting on him, pulling his beard beard and all them things like that. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. A lamb. And we know how a lamb is. So precious. So cute. So so innocent. May we say innocent would be the word for it. A lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before for his a, a sheep before her shears is dumb, is open as not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, who shall declare his generation, for he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. 
when, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of the soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify me for he shall bear their iniquities therefore will i divide him a portion with the great and shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death and was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors how many of us could do that? How many of us could be falsely accused, suffered and bruised, beaten, crucified, and not said a word? I don't think any of us can do it. We don't have that kind of power, do we? Think you could do it? You think somebody that hates you, and we, we can't even take a lie told on us. We can't even take that, can we? Oh, it upset us so much and we start holding a grudge called somebody lied on us. Why don't you try going to that person and saying, I don't know why you lied about me. Why don't you try that sometime? Oh, they might break down on their knees and start tearing up. You see peer people uh, tear up. I have the people I've roomed with in the motel. Oh, Daryl, you had me crying. That's right, and, that, and that's what you should be. You should be a light in a dark place to those that are lost and, and don't know Christ. I want them to have what I have. It, it's the greatest thing in the world. It's the greatest thing in the world. And once, once uh, God saves your soul, you'll be a whole different person. When I come out of that church that night after that revival, you talk about weeping. And I had hair down here. I shot up drugs and things like that. I kind of had a broken leg, and it, the church was longer than this church. It was a big Baptist, old Baptist church. I was on the back pew, and I started crying. I, I couldn't hold back. Oh, no, I jumped up there on that one leg. In crutches, I didn't even think about it. Hopped all the way up there, gave my life to Christ, and then people <clears throat> looked at me after I got out, out of there. Oh, he's a different person. I heard him talking. I heard him talking. Oh, he's a different person. I grant you, you become different. And everything about you becomes different when you receive Christ in your life and in your heart. You become a different person. You don't do the same things. I come out of that church so happy and free. Oh, I could hear the birds. Oh, the air was so much cleaner. Oh, the air that I was breathing. Oh, everything was so much greener. Oh, the trees, the sky, and everything was so much different. And I still have that today. Everything's different with me now. The, the sin and all that. Oh, that's totally different. I don't hang around with the same crowd. I don't do the same things. Because you know why? Because God had done something for me and took that desire away. He takes the desire away to do them kind of things. Oh, is it hard to do? To keep from doing them things? No. It's definitely not hard to do because God took them away. He took the desire and you just don't desire them things. And God and Jesus did that for each and every one of us. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Somebody got something on their heart right now. Something on your heart right now. I forgot my book. I don't even know. I know I had a, a good song that I was wanting to sing. I don't know what it is. I need to find it. Okay. <clears throat> this is going to be our invitation. Oh, yeah. I'd rather have Jesus. Isn't that what you want today? Wouldn't you rather have Jesus and end up? You want the devil? You can have the devil. You can have the devil if you want. But if you want Jesus, he will change your life. And he will make things better for you. It does say we will suffer persecution, sorrows, heartache. We're going to still suffer that. But if you want Jesus this morning, I'd rather have Jesus than Satan any day. 
I, I know who Satan was. I had Satan ever since I was a little boy. I stuck an electric cord. In, that's why my mouth's the way it is. I stuck an electric cord in my mouth when I was a baby that was plugged up in a wet diaper. I'll never forget it. And that's where the devil started with me because he wanted this little boy gone. Because our job is to bring others to Christ. You think the devil wants that? Oh no. Let's destroy, destroy this little boy right here. Let's, let's have him put an electric cord in his mouth. You know, the doctor didn't know where that electric went through. Probably went through my head and I was crazy than I Yes. Could have. Okay, I'd rather have Jesus. Bible 6. Y'all want to stand? Uh, do you feel the spirit this morning? I know I go crazy. And Debbie always said, you can't do that stuff in a Baptist church. Yes, we can. What are you talking about? You can't do that stuff in a Baptist church. Oh, they're not that kind. No, you better not do that. Just get all fired up. And I think Bob has seen me fired up before at my house. I think so. And uh, I try to hold all that back, but you can't hold Christ back sometimes. 506, I'd rather have Jesus. Great song. All right, we're going to sing it all. This is your invitation. Somebody don't know Christ this morning, this is the time. Hallelujah.
I'm not going to call on anybody, but who'd like this message? I'll pray. Thank you, Robin. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for all the gifts and blessings you give us every day. Let us look to you for all our needs, and we pray for all those that are sick and uh, lost. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.